Welcome back to For the Lonely Nights. I'm Paul Kim. And I would just like to start off by apologizing ahead of time because um, it seems like this episode of For the Lonely Nights is going to be a little bit behind schedule. Uh, it's probably going to be posted a little after the typical Fridays. And, you know, that's because this past week I've been thinking of and coming up with something a little different, a little more special than the regular podcast format that we're used to, um, that we've been using the past few weeks. And, um, you know, as always, uh, whenever you're trying something new, there's always going to be a couple speed bumps along the way. Uh, So I'm in the process right now of getting, you know, working those out, getting everything adjusted. Um, So definitely bear with me here. Um, I'll definitely, you know, try my best uh, from here on out to be on time and be on schedule. Um, but yeah, you know, um, I hopefully the next podcast definitely makes up for this. Um, it's definitely something to look forward to. Uh, so I'm excited for that. Um, but, you know, with that being said, this podcast right here, we also got some great stuff to talk about. Um, and I know I say that every week, but, you know, it, it's some really interesting stuff this week, um, especially this first one. So let's just jump right into it. Um, and this first topic, I, you know, I'm not too familiar with it myself. I must say that, you know, at the start here um, and you know, I didn't even know this this existed uh, before this week, and uh, it's going to be actually on the topic of dependas. And for those of you who don't know what a dependa is, much like myself, um, I have the Urban Dictionary definition pulled up right here. Uh, so let me just read it for you real quick. A dependa is a person who is married to someone in the service who doesn't just depend on their spouse for financial support, but pretty much relies on them for it. They start out all cute and all American until after the wedding. Then it's like cookies, couch, and coach purses. Arguing with other dependents over Facebook all day over who's the bigger dependa. They're generally not educated and have no goals or aspirations in life. And they live their lives through their spouse's success. And they rank and are better. And they think they rank and are better than civilians when they themselves are in face still civilians. Um... So, yeah, you know, just just from this definition alone, we can tell that, you know, the term dependa isn't, you know, technically a compliment. Um, it's it's definitely an insult, you know, um, and I think I've read that it's one of the, the harsher insults um, that you can use uh, for people, you know, in this particular situation with people who have who their spouses are in the military or in service. And, um you know, I like I said, I, I didn't even know this term existed uh, before, you know, um, before this week. And I was just scrolling through Reddit um, and apparently there's a whole subreddit dedicated to uh, just making fun of people in these in these situations, you know, uh, making fun of dependents. And um, I was just kind of scrolling through that that subreddit. And, you know, it, it generally has a most people on there have a general consensus about, you know, what characteristics and what qualities make a a dependa and you know as you can tell um, they're not very good stuff Uh, I know lately the term Karen has been very popularized um, and you know it just like you know the word Karen dependa is kind of used um, to generalize and and make fun of a, a group of people who you know (laughs) <laughs> yeah you guys know what i'm talking about it, i'm just saying you know it's it's not a very positive term uh, to describe somebody and uh you know like i said uh, when we started this topic um i am not very familiar with this myself i'm not uh familiar on where the origins of this term came from or you know i'm not qualified to speak upon people who are in this particular situation or you know um, about the the military or things like that so uh, whatever i say right here you know it's just my initial uh my initial personal thoughts on on this whole thing and so you know take it with a grain of salt but yeah you know what, what i just kind of wanted to touch upon uh, regarding this topic here today was um just 
on the the situation itself you know um people who are kind of find their identity or kind of live through um their spouse's job or the, their spouse's position or rank in in some uh you know former shape you know um, whether they be in the military whether they're in some sort of you know big company or organization you know um and it and it seems like you know like is this is not just limited to um people in the military um of course the term dependa it's generally referred to uh, people whose spouses are in service but um if you just kind of think outside this term and outside this kind of a uh, subreddit you know dedicated to making fun of dependents um you can see that this particular situation this particular thing applies to um a lot of different other like jobs and positions um out there in this world in this society and um just the two biggest things that i can think of off the top of my head right now would be um people who you know spouses of let's say uh, religious figures like pastors and spouses of political figures like the president you know i think those are very um similar and very relevant kind of comparisons when it comes to um spouses of of people in service spouses of military uh personnel and and i just want to preface this uh, before i go any further by uh, saying that i'm not here to take anything away from these individuals who are in this particular position um I definitely understand and I respect the fact that um a lot of these people you know who are married to spouses in the military or or in some high ranking position um they themselves have to make uh, certain sacrifices to adjust to you know that given situation um some people sacrifice you know their dreams their jobs uh some sacrifice their homes their lifestyle um their time and i'm sure all of these people go through plenty of stress and and heartache you know because they are put in this particular position and um you know i'm like i said i'm not here to take anything away from them um i'm sure they go through a handful uh, of struggles and hardships that i'll never uh, understand myself because i'm not in that position um but you know i'm just here to kind of uh, speak upon the idea of it you know and i think it's a very interesting idea um you know being put upon a pedestal uh that you didn't ask for um not because of what you did or or your own actions um or even your own identity but um because of the person you're married to like i said and and kind of speaking on um just the three that i mentioned earlier um and the first one is very self-explanatory um especially in america um people who are serving in the military or who have served are they're very highly respected and regarded you know um in other places around the world like south korea um all men are required to serve in the military they're all they're all required to enlist for a certain amount of years uh when they reach a certain age so there it's not you know anything really too special um but here you know in america it's a choice that you have to make and it's a rather difficult choice too um a lot of these individuals um had to leave their families their homes uh had to walk away from their dreams their op- you know opportunities their careers um to be serving their country so it's a very admirable thing and it's a, it's a very highly respected um position and you know i think you know with a level of sacrifice um comes a level of prestige and and respect um that is owed and i'm sure that's where this whole dependent thing even came from is you know people see that these individuals who are uh, married to um a military personnel or, or the kids of someone in the military you know they kind of take advantage of the the status that they're given you know um but you know this kind of thing like i said it's not just limited to um the military you know the second one of the three that i mentioned um religious figures you know spouses of pastors kids of pastors um i think that's very similar um in in essence you know um and myself you know personally growing up in the church and and being a pastor's kid myself you know being a pk um i definitely seen a, a lot of these at work you know um 
definitely seen how uh, just being married to the pastor, being the kids of a pastor, it gives you, um, it elevates you to um, a little above, I would say, the, the average Joe, you know, the average member of the church. Um, you are given uh, a lot more credit. Um, you are met with a lot more expectations. And therefore, if you mess up, you are met with a lot harsher criticism. Um, and, you know, I think honest, obviously it can be, it definitely is a privilege to be in that position. Uh, and at the same time, um, it can definitely be very detrimental. Um, it definitely is a blessing and a curse. And, um, you know, I kind of just speak upon um, just my own, I guess, experiences with this and, and what I've observed. And, um, you know, especially in the church where it's um, involving religion and, and faith and belief, you know, um, the pastor himself, um, it, there are certain requirements and qualifications that need to be met to become a pastor of a church, um, of a community. And, you know, they have to go through seminary school. They have to, you know, train. Um, they got to prepare themselves spiritually, mentally, physically. You know, they got to um, go through, you know, a lot to become uh, a pastor. And even after becoming a pastor, <clears throat> I would argue that that's where the real battle starts. You know, it um, you got a lot on your plate each and every day. But, you know, being married to a pastor, being the wife or the husband of a pastor, being the kids of a pastor, you yourself don't have to go through any of that training necessarily. You know, you yourself aren't qualified to um, be leading uh, any, I guess, church activities or 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 be leading any uh, services or, or groups, you know. Um, but just with the title alone, just with being related to the pastor, it gives you certain qualifications that you don't deserve. It gives you certain um, credibility that, you know, you yourself did not earn, that you yourself honestly shouldn't have, but it's there. It's given to you because of who you're related to, um, because of who you're married to. And I think definitely, um, you know, maybe in the military, um, it might work out, but, you know, in, in respect to the church, you know, and religion, you know, I think that in and of itself is a very interesting idea. Uh, it could be a very dangerous one as well. I know um, in my old church growing up, the, the the wife of the pastor, of the senior pastor was, um, you know, just regarded as a lot high, um, more spiritual and more um, kind of, yeah, credible when it came to um, spiritual spirit spirituality um and things like that you know and so um if the if the fur if the pastor's wife or the pastor's kids said something um you know that's kind of what you got to believe you know you got to kind of take that um as you know as they say it you know because somehow in some way they just see because their dad or their their husband or their wife is a pastor you know, somehow this the the knowledge and the wisdom of God kind of flows in them as well through the, I, you know, you know, you get what I'm trying to say, you know, and um, I don't take anything away, like I said, from these individuals. I'm sure, you know, I'm sure that um, many individuals, I've seen it myself, you know, when they are put in this position that they didn't ask for and met with these expectations that um, that they don't deserve, um, they step up to the plate you know they they work hard they even if they aren't initially qualified they make themselves qualified um they they uh make sure not to disappoint everyone and, and let everyone down and and they they work twice as hard three times as hard um to be able to uh, meet the expectations the unrealistic expectations that everyone has of them and so those people i highly respect and like i said i'm not taking anything away from them um but it is a very, you know, dangerous idea in and of itself. And, um, you know, this even goes along to the third thing that I mentioned earlier, you know, uh, political figures. Um, the, the, the first lady, you know, um, of the U.S., uh, the wife of the president, um, 
or you know in the future the first first man i guess um you know the the husband if we ever have a female president in the future um you know the the husband of the president and these people i would say are put upon even um, a higher pedestal than you know military spouses or, or pastors uh spouses you know the president um maybe i don't know some senators but but definitely the president of himself you know um being the first lady of the u.s definitely comes with its own privileges um and you know i'm sure it comes with you know its own fair share of of, of, of struggles and, and stress you know um being higher up on the ladder presents you with definitely more of the good stuff but definitely a lot more of the bad stuff as well and um you know same thing speaking upon that um leading a country or making political decisions and polit you know political actions um and i'm not speaking just upon the current first lady uh with, with melina melina trump um but you know i'm sure many of the first ladies in the past as well um you know what what qualifies them to make these kind of political decisions and and you know uh, actions you know i know a lot of the first ladies you know what they usually do is they take they start a movement or you know they they start a campaign to to reform you know this to fix that whether it be you know world hunger poverty uh i think melina right now she's she's focused upon cyberbullying you know things like that you know and they kind of um lead those things and um, because they are the first lady you know because they are um the the wives the spouse of the president of the united states um they're just given that much more power that much more credibility um their actions their words have that much more weight and um you know it is it, it's, it's obvious you know when when someone like the first lady or someone like the president someone in power uh says "Ooh, i like pineapples on pizza more than than you know pineapples not on pizza you know and you hearing that um will make you kind of think favor more favorably towards pineapples on pizza just because of the position and power this person is in and given you know um rather than you know someone random on the street or one of your friends saying oh i like pineapples on pizza i don't think you know after hearing that you would suddenly um consider ever trying pineapples on pizza if you you know haven't liked it before but um you know and this goes on to the whole with power comes responsibility and you know spider-man and that whole thing which i'm not going to get into today but um it definitely is a very um slippery slope like i said when it comes to these things um you know, on one hand, uh, these individuals who are, you know, married to these people in positions of power or respect, um, like I said, they themselves have to get go through certain sacrifices, certain hardships, uh, certain expectations, um, and they need to adjust to those things. They need to uh, work up to those things. They need to meet those expectations. And so I'm sure, um, you know, on one hand, we want to give them the credit, you know, that, um that we give them but on the other hand you know you beg, it begs the question like i said are these people even qualified to be receiving the certain amount of credit or prestige that they are you know um and so you know i don't have an answer for you like always um it's just something that i wanted to kind of uh, talk about and mention um and yeah you know i think it's definitely something that is very uh it's something valuable to keep in mind and kind of think over it yourself as well um, where you stand upon this um, I'm sure people have experiences uh, personal experiences you know with something similar whether even if it's not military or, or, or religious or political I'm sure that this thing applies uh, to you know a lot of things I'm sure it applies all across the board so um, yeah you know um, that, that's that's pretty much it you know <laughs> um i know that was a, a bit of a ramble but yeah you know i think it's just definitely something interesting to think about um and uh, this just kind of all s kind of sprouted from me finding that subreddit about dependence um so <laughs> uh 
um go check that out too if you want um it reddit is a very interesting place um and so yeah i don't know if it's gonna uh be useful to to a lot of people but you know i, th- I think this topic in and of itself was very uh, just a very valuable thing to think about um and yeah you know what maybe if i have a, a change of heart i'll talk about it again maybe sometime in the future um but yeah that's that um let's go on to uh, the second thing on the agenda and you know the next two are gonna be fairly short compared to this first one i think the first one was definitely the toughie to get out of the way um you know i think you could tell in my voice too i was kind of figuring things on figuring things out along the way as well i'm still unsure about where i really stand but yeah you know i'm um, going on to the second one anyways um dude let's just talk about the weather for a second it's been hot lately like it's been hot hot and like living in socal um and in san diego i can't really complain about the weather um <laughs> so um but you know like we usually have fairly nice weather all around the year um and that's what we're kind of known for as well and but yeah this past week um uh, these past couple of, like few days like the temperatures rose considerably i feel like um and yeah it's just been super hot and um i think definitely living in socal uh the 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 past you know whatever years has definitely lowered my tolerance for for heat and and things like that i used to i lived a good chunk of my life in arizona growing up and so in in arizona you know it's a desert out there it's it's real hot you know um but i think definitely (laughs) moving here to socal I definitely got used to the nice weather and so even just like the 90s um mid 90s or or yeah high 90s like they seem like you know like i don't know like hell on earth or something like that like there's like fire everywhere like it's hot and um you know when the weather gets like that you know like that feeling where your body just kind of gets all sticky um, and it's not even because of sweat. Like, yeah, you sweat and stuff like that. Um, but just naturally, the hot air, like the humid air, just makes your like your body have a thin layer of just stickiness, just ar- like enveloped around you. And like, I, I think like I just took a shower as well. You know, like I fi- find myself having to take a shower like a lot more often, uh, just to feel like clean even if i didn't go out or do anything um just because of the weather uh just because of you know the the humidity around here um and you know there's a funny story actually actually a couple days ago um i think it was like the peak of being you know the peak of uh the heat or the heat wave we're having or whatever it is and um i was after dinner i was actually in in the bathroom in the restroom Uh, doing my business um you know i was just on on youtube watching a video while i'm uh you know dropping some loads and (laughs) all of a sudden i hear this like loud uh spark screech you know you know that sound like on the old tvs where you turn off turn on or turn off like one of those old tv sets and you know that like ting that like high pitch sound you hear i don't know if you guys know what i'm talking about but yeah, there was like a high pitch, you know, burst of sound, and then everything just turned dark, like black. I was like, "What the heck is happening?" You know, and like obviously, you know, after a few seconds, I realized, "Dang, the electricity went out." You know, and I thought it was just the bathroom, but you know, it turns out the electricity went out like I don't know for a few blocks. You know, around you know all the houses were, all the lights were down and. And, you know, by this time, the sun went down already. So it was like dark, dark. And so I'm just sitting there on the toilet in in like pitch black darkness. And I'm like, dude, what the heck is going on? Um, and luckily, I had my phone. So I had like the screen light to kind of <laughs> guide me um, to where the toilet paper is. So I could, you know, at least finish up doing my stuff. But dang, like luckily you know i was in the the comforts of my own home but one of my biggest fears is that this same thing happens when i'm like 
alone out in like a public bathroom or something and like i think like last quarter uh or the quarter before we went into quarantine uh, i was walking around campus at ucla and it was late at night like late late and you know so no obviously no one was on campus and it was just me and my friend and we're just walking around talking and chilling and i had to you know i had to nature was calling you know i had to go to the bathroom and um all the buildings were locked um obviously because you know the day's over and so we went around like um walked around for 20 minutes trying to find um a building that wasn't unlocked and we finally found a back door that we could kind of slip into and you know the whole building all the lights were turned off um and it was a very scary looking building too and yeah like we finally find the found the bathroom and i made sure my friend stayed with me like holding my hand through the whole thing because <laughs> boy dude it was scary but yeah like imagine me and being in one of those bathrooms like alone and all of a sudden all the lights go off oh my god i don't think i honestly don't think i would move i'd probably call like 911 right then and there so they can rescue me probably won't even like wipe or anything until they got there but anyways <laughs> you know all this from hot weather you know i think it's the the heat is getting to my brain too kind of talking about all this but yeah just something funny i think i thought that i thought you know you guys would like to hear um but yeah <laughs> going on to the third and final thing uh let's start let's wrap this one up here um i want to talk about legend of Korra. yes you know um if you guys don't know legend of Korra is the sequel series to avatar the last airbender and uh recently like the past i think a month ago or yeah recently like there's been there's been like a, a revival of of avatar the last airbender like this this show came out years ago but um like you know it, it made a comeback somehow i think it got very popular on tiktok or something like that and so everybody got hopped back on on the on the avatar the last airbender train and um you know everyone's like kind of obsessed with it and it came out on netflix too you know they put it out on netflix um i think that's kind of how also it became so big again and you know um i was kind of thinking about that and after the last airbender like honestly hands down i would say is one of the the best um shows you know not even just animated shows just shows in general you know the, the storyline character development uh you know the action everything is just so well done um so you know obviously one of the all-time classics um but i was thinking and you know legend of Korra came out a, a few years ago too i think it finished a couple years ago and um i remember starting to watch it but i never really remembered if i finished it um i don't really honestly recall anything that that happened in the series so i'm like dude i need to rewatch this again but you know i couldn't find it anywhere um online yeah you know even through the sketchy websites like i couldn't find um good place to watch the episodes so i kind of gave up on that but dude yeah it came out on netflix today they put it on netflix um they put it on netflix now too so um i started yesterday and so i've been kind of binging the legend of korra and dang dude like like i said like it's like a first time experience for me because i don't really remember anything that i watched before and dang i'm excited you know this this looks so like it looks like all the action and and you know the fan favorites of avatar the last airbender airbender has been revived and revamped you know i think that's what legend of Korra kind of feels like and so um you know i don't want to spoil anything for you guys if you haven't watched it so so shut your ears um you know i'm not going to spoil too much i'm just kind of talk going to talk about how um you know and you know how in avatar the last airbender like each of that four bending elements they have their own respective like next level stuff you know when it fire bending you know the the next step up is uh bending lightning you know shooting lightning out of your fingers um earth bending obviously you know you could bend metal um after that uh water bending uh blood bending you know that's like the next step i'm not sure about air bending though maybe they, they they're going to introduce something like that in legend of core but yeah you know like all of these things that were like seen once or twice in avatar the last airbender you know these things that only the main characters the main cast has kind of mastered uh in like the first 
couple episodes of Legend of Korra, we already see like metal bending and and lightning. You know, all these things are kind of normalized now. Like regular people can do all these things, and you know, all these benders aren't separated into nations anymore. They're all living in one like big city, and so you know, it's definitely a <laughs> a, a very interesting sight and a very welcoming sight to see um and you know kind of speaking upon this i kind of want to talk about you know something real quick before we end uh what you know the age-old question if you if bending was a real thing what bending power would you want to have i feel like that's definitely something fun to talk about and um you know i think my personally myself growing up and watching avatar um i think earth bending was definitely what i always favored um just you know just seeing toph and like molding and shaping all of like the, the rocks and and you could do so much cool stuff with it um it's like you have like full control and reign of like all of the things around you and so you know definitely earth bending was was my um was my favorite growing up but i don't know i think something changed and so um, I was just kind of thinking about it recently again. Um, and I think definitely if, if, if I had to have a bending power, I think this time around it would be air bending. Um, and I know a lot of people are like, what the air bending? That's like the worst one out of the four. Um, and you know, I thought so too, but thinking about it, like in this modern day society, um, earth bending, I don't know how useful that would be. Um, <laughs> Like, yeah, we still have a lot of earth around us, but we also have a lot of metal, a lot of cement, plastic, you know, a lot of things that you can't bend, you know, um, now that civilization has advanced so much. And, you know, like metal bending, you know, definitely that, you know, I guess you can bend metal um, if you're an earth bender. Um, but I think you're definitely more limited in this kind of modern age if you're an earth bender. Um, I think definitely fire bending is <laughs> I don't know fire bending never really appealed to me. I feel like it definitely has it's definitely you know more offensive like battle based power um and maybe you could use it to heat up your food or something like that your cup noodles or something without a microwave but other than that other than for fighting I don't know if there's a very applicable usage of it. I know in Legend of Korra they showed uh, firebenders using lightning to power like power plants and stuff maybe that's you know that's pretty cool too but you know i think on the utility scale fire bending would definitely be on the, the be on the lower side a water bending water bending is pretty cool too not gonna lie i was having a hard time just deciding between water bending and air bending but um you know water bending the, the one big drawback to that is you have to have a water source um at least so far as i've seen you can't like you can't make your own water um, so that's why Katara always carried around that jug of water, you know, next to her. So she can, she always has something to bend. Um, but, you know, it's very useful, obviously. Um, yeah, I think definitely it might be the very most useful out of the four. Um, just regarding utility and all of that. Blood bending definitely is a scary, scary thing. So, um, yeah, you know, definitely a top contender. But I think why I chose air bending is, dang, first of all, air is all around us, like, you're never gonna have a shortage of air other like what unless you're stuck in like a, a confined space or in or in space you know like but you know you got air all around you um so you never have to worry about not being able to bend um and do like if you see ang in in avatar the last airbender like he's zooming around always he's flying like you can fly if you're an airbender um i don't know like airbending can definitely be deadly too you know you can use it for very powerful attacks and things like that but just more than attacks it's just like i feel like it would just be so much fun to be an airbender and to be airbending to be flying to be you know like you would even need a car like you could do a little air bubble thing that aim does and just like use that to get around um yeah dude honestly um it'd be such a blast uh being an airbender so uh, i think definitely right now i think that's where i stand um, I'm definitely going to revisit this again, though. Uh, once I maybe finish the, the series Legend of Korra, then I'll revisit it. And, you know, maybe then I'll change my mind. Um, but for now, uh, yours truly is going to be an airbender. 
so <laughs> yeah, let me know um you know what what bending you guys would have you guys would want to have in the comments. Um I think that's definitely always a fun topic to talk about. Um but yeah, before we go um and before we end things off, um like always, I want to uh, end off with a, a Bible verse. And the Bible passage from this week is going to come from the book of Mark, uh, chapter 7. And it's going to be from the passage um, titled, Jesus Honors a Syrophoenician Woman's Faith. Um, so it's going to be from verse 24 to 30. Uh, let me read that for you right here. Jesus left that place and went to the vicinity of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know it. Yet he could not keep his presence secret. In fact, as soon as she heard about him, a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an impure spirit came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, born in Siren, Phoenicia. She begged Jesus to drive the demon out of her daughter. First, let the children eat all they want, he told her, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Lord, she replied, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he told her, For such a reply you may go. The demon has left your daughter. She went home and found her child lying on the bed and the demon gone. Amen. So that's going to wrap it up for this week. Um, thank you once again for joining us for another episode of For the Lonely Nights. Um, you know, I know uh, some of you guys are starting school this week, so um, good luck with that. Definitely going to be praying for you guys. And for those of you who have, still have a couple weeks left, um, before school starts, um, definitely enjoy uh, the time of rest that God has blessed us with. Um, you know, always stay smiling, everyone. Uh, you know, let hit me up. Let me know if there's anything you guys want me to talk about or, you know, anything like that. Um, always a, a pleasure to be here. And so, yeah, um, you know, I'll see you guys next week. Um, just have a fantastic, fantastic week, everyone. And like always, all glory to God.